So we're done with the navigation. Let's create the header, which is very, very simple. Uh, we have this really basic rectangular area at the top, and I've created this really, really simple movie clip in here. So I'll just drag it on top, create a new layer and call it header, like so. Uh, and position it to the top top left. Okay, we can put it a bit out uh, because we don't want to see the left and the right border uh, on our website, o only the bottom one actually. Uh, give it an instance name, obviously, a header. And we don't need to add this one dynamically. So we can have it on the stage at all times. We don't uh, need to add multiple instances of it. Uh, no real particular reason to, to, to complicate this one. We can just drag it on the stage, make it an instance name of header, and then position it using quite the same uh, function as for nav container. So header. and over here also header and you can see it's it's done the same way only the instance name was uh, changed and here we go so we have it repositioning constantly uh scaling right not repositioning this time uh from uh, from the left uh, edge of our player to the right one okay and now that we're done with that which was really really simple if you want to add any text inside we can either double click and then just add a text right like so or you know if you'll have some more complex uh, dynamic content or anything like that if it's t uh, loaded from an XML file you can again either prepare it and add a text and then just uh, load the data from an XML file or you can even complicate a bit more and make this as a parent container for everything that you're inputting in any case there's no need to uh, add it as a child uh, uh, through action script, right? So you can just drag it up here and give it an instance name of header. Uh, let's do the logo now. So logo. And let's go to Illustrator, copy that, paste it. We can paste it as a bitmap. We don't need to scale this one or anything like that. So we really shouldn't have much of a problem when it comes to repositioning let's put it up here save it and let's change this one to logo and also logo so it's easier for us to access it and also uh, let, let's say lossless for now you know if you'll have problems with performance later we'll just change it okay so we have our logo at the top left we have our header at the top. Everything is repositioning as it should be. We can add some shadow over here without using action script because we've just dragged it to the stage. Just change its strength a bit because it's by default it's pretty much always way too high. Like so, and possibly even let's go to border. I don't know. This still seems a bit thick to me. Hmm. Run it, and here you go. So this is beginning to look like we set out to achieve. Uh, we have the header now. We have the logo at the left. We have the navigation at the bottom, and all we need to do now, as far as layout and positioning goes, uh, is to create the uh this main section container that will hold all of our uh different contents now we've already created and positioned the navigation we have our header also scaling from the left to the right and our logo type on the top left one thing left to do is to add our main section and position it we'll go into our illustrator file over here we have everything prepared and we can just copy and paste it onto the stage. Let's go down to the main section layer and paste it using AI file importer preferences. Uh, I'll fit the screen so we can work with it better. Uh, and 
break apart. It was a group and no use to us being a group. First of all, we'll change these two to dynamic text. We need to change the behavior here to multi-line. Now we can stretch it up a bit. Uh, let's go to our library and get this in order. So welcome. And this would be our welcome image. And this will be our welcome image as well. Because this is a movie clip, right? And finally we have our welcome bitmap. Like so. So better to fix it all and make it neat in the beginning. Uh, if you just do copy and pasting into our flash file uh, or importing stuff from the drive without setting it up appropriately, sooner or later everything will just start looking like a mess. Uh, let's also name all of these objects. So welcome title and this will be the welcome content and this will be the welcome image. All of these will put into another main container and this is the container that will hold all of our uh, main sections over here. So each frame will represent another main section and then we'll just go to it and stop and animate something in between, right? So going back to the scene, the first thing we can do is position our main container and here we go, main container dot x equals stage dot stage width divided by 2. We have to subtract the half of our main containers width, so main container dot width divided by 2. This will get it back to the center. Okay, have a problem. Main container. Let's check out, did we name it? Nope. So main container. And now it should work. So we have it positioned to the center. But nothing is really scaling yet and everything is pretty, as far as this main section goes now, it's pretty static. So we have it to a set width and we're just centering it. And this is okay. Many times this is all you need. Let's check it in here. It'll look nicer and faster, right? This is a lot of the times exactly what you need. Uh, but right now we'll actually go a bit further and we'll make this text scale a bit. And the image actually positioned dynamically according to the width of our player. Uh, and we'll do that by going to our position actions. First of all, let's specify the repositioning of our image. So main container dot welcome image dot x equals. And now we want to keep it over here, not pin it exactly to the right. So it's completely static to our right edge. And also not keep it exactly as is. So we don't want to keep it uh, exactly in the order of what we have it and then just center it, right? We want to scale our text on the left and reposition our image uh, appropriately according to the width of our player. And let's go straight to doing that because it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, welcome image dot x stage dot stage width minus, and this is the tricky part, stage dot stage width divided by 980. 980 is our default width uh, of the player, of the movie, uh, and times 540 or 50. This is how much we want our image to be away from the right edge. And by default, when we have our minimum width, we want it to be 540 or 550 pixels away from this right edge. Let's just check out why. If we click, double click, opa. let's go back. And let's double click over here and command shift 4 to check out the how much it's spaced. It's about 530, right? But we gave it a bit of a additional space for the margin so we have a bit more a bit more space on the right okay so let's paste it down here and see what's happening now and let's check it in the external player okay 
now you can see that the wider the wider the player gets the more space you have in between here okay so it's kind of in between pinning the image to the right and having everything centered uh, I like this behavior better because it keeps the whole design in place better than either of the other two methods the only thing to do now to fill this extra gap that's coming in here is to scale our text over here on the left and to do that let's just take main container dot welcome content I think it's welcome content let's just check yep welcome content dot scale x equals stage dot stage width divided by 980 so when we start scaling it up it's gonna start scaling up at the default size it's one so it's exactly as much as we specified here to be and the end result looks like that so let's scale it up and scale it down okay so we are having this kind of a dynamic positioning dynamic centering of these two items all the while filling in this gap so we don't have a huge white space in the middle if we have a large display right this should keep things quite in order but if you start noticing any problems with larger resolutions with text bleeding into our image I mean okay because that's a possibility all you need to do is to increase this number here a bit and it'll force itself to be a bit narrower so if we check it out right it's kind of perfectly scaling and giving way to our image okay so that's as far as the positioning goes we've created all of our elements we have the navigation and let's have the what we've done by now up we have our navigation we have our main section we have our header and the logo type at the top left so we need to start creating the functionality for our navigation so if we mouse over mouse out and of course click to change the section in here as soon as we get to our uh, section that has XML content will also add uh, loading of XML and inputting that into our uh, text fields or and loading the images of course okay here it is and it's not that hard uh, the main container over here this would be the sections layer over here we'll add on each frame a different section and then we'll just go to it when we click and of course we'll have a transition in between to make the whole experience nicer okay so we're done with the layout and positioning and now we'll actually go to adding the interactivity to our website thank you